have slides? Sweet. Good lunchtime, everyone. It's good that they're fill it in here. So yeah, this is this is building a career around Blender. Uh, first, quick show of hands. How many people actually here make a living using Blender? Sweet. This talk is totally not for you. Uh, <laughs> Not entirely. How many people want to make a living with Blender? Okay, cool. This is for you, but for the other ones of you that raise your hands, this is also for you to share with people that look at you and go, but how? This is, this is the way, this is hopefully the way. And the idea is, I'm not going to get into like the nuts and bolts of like accounting or how do I do freelance or any of that sort of things. It's going to be a little bit more fundamental about it. So first question. Is it possible? Yeah, it is. Uh, it is absolutely possible to have a career with Blender, and you can do it for a long time. But I'm proof. I've been doing this for, by the way, I'm, hi, I'm, I'm Jason. Just forgot to mention that. I've been doing this for over two decades. I've been using Blender professionally in some capacity for, for a second, for a while. And, um, yeah, there are just so many different types of opportunities that you can use Blender for. And they're not all the same, and they're not all what you might expect. I mean, of course, there's stuff like Blender Market. You can sell add-ons, you can sell assets, uh, you can sell educational material and those sort of things. You can also do education, uh, original content, right? Make your own stuff and go through the whole process of selling the stuff. And then, of course, there's, there's um, working for other people, right? Using your skills and being hired and actually having a salaried sort of job. And the thing is that 3D is everywhere and it's becoming more and more places, right? You're, you got con construction, industrial design, architecture, marketing, entertainment, product design, package design, engineering, uh, employee training, 3D printing rapid prototyping, military training, all these different places, they're all involving 3D because 3D is the bridge between digital space and meat space, right? It is the thing that connects what you do in your head to what comes out and you can touch and be tactile and play with. And that bridge can be made with Blender. And that's what you can use it for. You can, and that's why Blender gets used. Like one of my favorite things to do is just talk to people about how they use Blender and what they use it for, because it's, it's all over the place, right? It's, it's in all these different places because it's free, because it's available for use uh, for all sorts of things, and therefore people will abuse the mess out of it and use it for, I gave a whole talk at Beacon LA about all the different and various and sundry goofy ways that Blender gets used, and they're, they're innovative and they're cool, and they're not always typical. And that's kind of the fun part about it. And that allows us to be creative because, you know, kind of we're, we're creative people. We can do creative things. Part of that involves, well, being creative in the how we use the tools that we love to use. So this whole talk is about steps, the steps that you need to go through in order to build out a career using Blender. Step one, open Blender. Right? This, obviously, if you're, if you're not using Blender, you should, I don't know why you're here. Uh, <laughs> maybe you're on YouTube watching this. But it, the, the idea is that you, you want to be able to use Blender and start understanding it and playing with it. So yeah, obviously, uh, open Blender, play with Blender. But the important thing is, don't start at the beginning. What I mean by that is, this is a common trap. I'm going to learn Blender. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to model, and I'm going to UV texture, and I'm going to, uh, well, well, then I'm going to unwrap, then I'm going to UV texture. Eventually, I want to animate, but I got to get through all these. No, don't do that. If you want to animate, start with animation. It used to be hard to find assets to start off with, pre-rigged characters or any of these, or, or any you know, pre-built models if you want to start getting into rigging. It used to be hard to find this stuff. It ain't or it's not proper English, it's not, right? You can, you can find the things and start where you're interested. Now, that said, get the basics down, you know, understand Blender's interface, it's gotten better, uh, <laughs> and, and you, really, you wanna get that down, but once you sort of understand how the application works, 
Jump right into what you're actually interested in. Now, if you want to do everything, go for it. Um, it'll, it's, it's a long road. I recommend uh, taking your time and not getting depressed. But uh, if you're actually, you know, if you have very focused interests, if, you, if you're, you don't care about modeling, don't start with modeling. That's, that's a trap. And you will find yourself suddenly good at modeling and everybody thinks you're a modeler and you're like, but I wanted to animate. And you, you didn't. So step one, open Blender, but focus on what you're actually interested in. Step two, get good. Now, here's the thing though. You wanna be good. You wanna be really good at what you do. But you don't have to be the best. Cynically speaking, you only really have to be better than the person who hired you. And technically, you don't have to be better than them. You just have to do the things that they don't want to do and they will pay you for, right? Whether you're freelancing or working in a larger corporate environment or in a studio, the whole thing is you are good enough. And that sounds kind of like a little self-serving, a little selfish, but that, does, that also means that you don't have to wait to try, right? You don't have to say, well, I'm not good enough to, to, to work at a studio. I'm not good enough to get paid to make my 3D models or uh, do my animations or 3D print stuff and sell them to folks or make my, my uh, add-ons. I'm not good enough. No, you, you are good enough. You just got to find the people who find what you do valuable and really, it's not that hard because what you do, what you know, is, is immediately valuable the second you start doing it and sharing it with other people. So, get good. Enough. <laughs> Step three, know your audience. What I mean by that is your, when, you, when you do your work, if you're not communicating, like, all 3D art, all art in general is communication, right? Everything is how I get a message out of my brain and into somebody else's brain. We are practicing telepathy one way or another. And the means by which you do it is you have to, the trick to telepathy, tele telepathy, whew, the trick to that isn't knowing or reading someone's mind. It's already knowing what they want. It's knowing what they want and then giving it to them. That's the whole purpose, that's the whole process. And that goes back to also knowing, you know, the, the, the thing about getting good is you knowing who you're serving, right? You're doing something for someone else or you're commuting, communicating something to someone else, whether you're making your own original content and telling a story or you're making a model for product visualization. Both of those things, you're knowing who you're doing it for and why you're doing it. That way, you're not spending all of your time rigging this really epic character when you're doing a couch, right? That's, you want to know who you're doing the right thing for and, and serving them properly. And most importantly, think outside of media and entertainment. I love it. I love movies. I love films. I love games. They're fantastic and they're awesome. And, but relative to everywhere else, remember, 3D connects the ideas to the real world. That means it can be used everywhere, right? It's not just for entertaining people. You can do a lot of things that don't just distract us from how mundane the world is or how boring things are or how much my life sucks, not, uh, everyone else's. Uh, but it's, you can also do things that, that have a certain level of meaning, that, have, uh, that do real things in the real world that, that are kind of incredible. And again, Blender facilitates that because it is everywhere, because it can do so many crazy things. And so while media, entertainment, they're super sexy, right? They're awesome, and that's what everybody talks about. Um, but everybody also wants to go there. You can find careers outside of that. You can find ways to use Blender and your skills and have fun and make cool stuff, and it doesn't have to be movies, games, and TV. So it's really, really seriously worth thinking about for that. Also, step, so that's one, two, three, four. The fourth part of this one is probably the, the hardest, and that is know your value. And that's a tough one because, well, 
value changes based on where you are physically, changes where you are mentally, right? Your value, is, and it also depends on how much they want to pay you, quite frankly, right? You, your value is in part, but not entirely defined by what other people think of you and your work. And this is why it's also important to know that you do have value and you can be paid for being good enough. And that also means that at an early part in your career, maybe you don't make the giant big bucks, even if you're the best in the world. But you're not, right? You, <laughs> it's, that's, that's, because there's, there's two sides to that, right? There's, there's, the, the, the one person who's like, I'm the best in the world, even though they might not be, and they want to be paid a ton of money for that. But you also have the other person over here who's like, I'll move your couch, and, they don't, and they'll do it for free. And they don't know that they're valuable. You don't know that you have skills that people actually will pay money for, for you to do it for them. And, and so... Which one are you? Which, side of that do you? which side of that spectrum do you fit in? Or do you fit in the middle of those, right? But you have to know, all right, I lean more towards not really knowing how much I'm worth, so maybe I should do a little bit more research and figure out those sort of things so that I can actually, and maybe it's just, maybe it's not so much about what the work is worth, but how much do I need to eat and pay rent, right? Okay, well, that's my value. That's what I have to, that's what I have to make in order to do that. Everybody has a different way of doing math, but you have to have a way of doing it in order to know what your value is and why it's important. Because the other part is that value is not always measured in dollar signs, right? What you do and how you do it and who you do it with is just as important. Are you treated well? Is the work interesting? Do they need you more than you need them? All of those things count and are relative to what your, what your value is. And it's not just about your skills, and it's not just about what you're getting paid. You can get paid and being coupled with an awesome team, right? There are, there are places where you can work and you're like, you know, I will take much less money to work with people who aren't assholes. Um, I'll take a lot less money to work with people who aren't assholes. Um, those are the sort of things that are really, really worth paying attention to because that's also, also this sort of goes, goes alongside with that. If you happen to freelance, be willing to fire your clients if they suck. Because... <laughs> but don't fire them the first day. You know, talk to them in like, part of your job, again, Everything we do, art, design, is communication. Communication, part of that is education, right? Sometimes you have to explain why something takes a long time or something doesn't take a long time or something is uh, not going to expectation or there's technical limitations. Take the time to explain it, right? Because by explaining that, by playing the part of educator in one form or another, you are sharing your value, because most people don't know, because most people don't care. Part of your job may not be to make them care, but they at least need to know, right? Otherwise, they're not gonna see the value of it. Sometimes it's not implicit. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not just built in. So these are the sort of things that are part of that. Step five, we're getting close to the end. Is it scary? I'm scared. <laughs> Step five, which actually might be the scariest one, be a person. I actually, I, I wanted to put a little thing in there, I, I forgot to do it. Be a good person? <laughs> because ultimately, your work, especially now, especially now, your work is not enough. Right, your portfolio you're more than your portfolio, and you need to be more than your portfolio. With all the technology and all the things, this is a story that's been going on for ages and ages and ages. It's not just now, but it's louder now. You need to be able to be a person, and you need to be able to relate to other people. The, the ability to express that, hey, I'm a person, and I'm trustworthy, and I'm good at what I'm doing, and you know, maybe I'm a little bit competent. Those, act, those things play into your values 
or your value to other people. The other part of it is that ultimately, you can't do this alone, right? If you're working in animation, if you're working, I mean, all right, so Blender's this giant thing that can do everything. Not everybody, very few of us, can do everything that's in Blender. We tend to specialize. We tend to know one thing or another. We find our feature that we're most akin to, and we grab onto it, and we go with it. But you can't necessarily do an entire production or an entire piece of work with that. And even if you could do an entire piece of work with it, you got to do it for somebody. Somebody's got to be paying you. So you're definitely not doing it alone, right? Unless, because if you're doing it alone, there are words for that, but they're not appropriate right now. Uh, <laughs> the idea, so you want to be able to be a person and be someone who that people can relate to. They want to be able to trust. You want them to trust you, and so you can play that educational part of it. Because here's the last part of it. You want to make sure that you have your own thing. Because you're not just your work. You're not just your portfolio. And ultimately, because you're doing work for other people, sometimes you're going to be playing the part of someone else's hands. They're going to be the brain. You're going to be the hands. And that's going to be a paycheck. And you're going to have to be OK with that. And part of the way of being OK with that is to have your own thing that you do for yourself. Because that's how you grow. No one, not, I won't say no one, because there are some rare exceptions, but by and large, no one's going to pay you to get better. They expect you to get better. And part of you getting better is doing stuff on your own. Part of you staying sane is doing stuff on your own. These are the practices, these are the things that, that really help make you, <laughs> help you give the appearance of being a person, even if you focus all of your energy on modeling or code or animation or, or any one particular thing. Doing your own thing, having your own thing to do. Because the other part of it is that anything you do that isn't what you normally do will inform what you do. It's a really wonky way of saying that because a lot of the word do is in there a lot. What I get it, what I'm saying is, look, my background is, is animation. I love to animate. I love to move. I love seeing movement. I also do Kung Fu. The, the parts of Kung, the only reason I'm able to do some things in Kung Fu is because I studied movement. I studied kinetics. So if somebody does like a butterfly kick, I'm like, I got that. I know how to do that. And so there's, there's an application where one feeds into the other. And now, if I need to animate someone doing a butterfly kick, I've done it, right? Those sort of things are part of that. And so that's part of being a person and having your own thing really does inform how you work and makes you better. And so ultimately, that's the gist of it. If you want to build a career in Blender, five steps. Open Blender, get good. Almost forgot what the other ones were. <laughs> know your audience, know your value, and be a good person. Thanks. <laughs>